Welcome to another edition of Tales of the Workshop. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at the floating neutral. So please stay tuned. Now recently, I had the occasion of working with a student who was experiencing problems with one of these project boards. And it occurred to me that the student had difficulty understanding that when they were using their digital multimeter to take readings in an effort to troubleshoot a problem, that they didn't understand the concept of a floating neutral. Now what is a floating neutral? Well, I'm gonna use this project board as an example to help clarify what this concept is. In this case here, what we have is three phase power coming into the board, which in Canada is 208 volts. And what we have is a transformer that's going to take that 208 volts and step it down to a usable 120 volts. We're gonna use 120 volts to control the contactor and so we have push buttons here, as well as an indicator light to give us a status. Now, the contactor, we actually have three blue lights to replicate each of the three phases. That represents maybe a induction motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and energize the board and we're gonna just talk about this. I'll be right back. Now that I've energized the board, what we're going to do is hit the start push button, which is color coded green. And what we can see is that I've energized the coil of the contactor. The contactor's armature has pulled in and its bridge contacts have changed state, allowing the 208 volts to energize my three respective phases. And I've also got an indicator light. Now, the push button, the coil inside of my contactor are all operating on 120 volts, as well as my green indicator light. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna replicate what I observed my student uh, doing. They were trying to troubleshoot a problem. And what they did is they just used this bolt as a reference point to try and get a voltage reading. Now, I'm just going to show you that from here to here, and I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but I am reading 19 volts on my multimeter. I know that this is incorrect. Now, upon seeing this, I had mentioned to the student that you need to reference X2 of the transformer because of the fact that there is no ground. This is a piece of metal. The student thought that this piece of metal was actually a ground, or a ground point and they were trying to reference uh, from it. And it didn't work. But it later on brought about this thought that maybe the student didn't understand what's the difference between uh, something that is grounded and something that is not. Because, because of the fact it's going to give us some really odd readings. And that can lead us to make mistakes or start searching for a problem that doesn't exist in the circuit. And that's what the conversation really should be about today. How do we effectively take measurements when dealing with a system like this where we have a floating neutral? Now, why do we call this a floating neutral? It's due to the fact that the transformer, the secondary, is not bonded it's not going to ground. All we have is the leads on the secondary X1 and X2 respectively that are completing a circuit. That is known in technical terms as a floating neutral. It's unbonded. Now, what we are going to do is we're gonna take some measurements and we're gonna try and explain the whole concept. Now, in order to do this properly, we're gonna take the digital multimeter. I'm gonna reference X2 to X1 on the secondary. Now what we can see, and I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but it is reading 134 volts. Now this is correct. Now 
if I take a reading from H1 to H2, we can see that we're reading uh, today 212 volts AC. So today there's not a lot going on here at the college. As a result, we have a little bit of an over voltage condition, but we are still within the parameters. Now, it would be perfectly reasonable to expect that if I took a voltage reading from here to what I believe was ground, I would get a reading. And here we do get somewhat of a reading. Now, when we look at this bar, we can see that it is just a steel bar that is bolted to a concrete wall. It's not bonded anywhere, but it would be reasonable to expect that the faceplate of this receptacle and even the center pin is grounded. As an electrician, I know that. So let's try and take a reading to what we know is a bond or a ground point. So if we take the meter and I go right to the cover plate, which is steel, it's stainless steel, but it still counts, I still get 22 volts. This is my main point. We have an unbonded or a floating neutral on the secondary side of this transformer. What I propose to do is I've got a piece of wire here and I'm going to bond the secondary side. I'm going to ground it. And then we're going to repeat this and see if there's a difference in our values. Down here, the perimeter of this lab, we ran a number six cable all around the perimeter, uh, partly to bond our workstations. And so what I've done is I've added a number 14 gauge green wire to this servet and I've clamped it down and now I'm going to terminate it right here. Now, first things first, for the sake of safety, I'm going to turn off the circuit and I'm gonna de-energize it. And turn off my three-phase power supply. We've made things safe. Now, let's go ahead and bond the secondary of our transformer. And all it remains is to just run a wire to ground. Well, if I can get it in there. Now, we're going to tighten that up. Now, this is no longer a floating neutral. This is bonded right to a ground point. Now that ground point is, if we can follow it, it goes along to the panel and comes up and is bonded right here at this piece of electrical metallic tubing or EMT. And this is all part of our ground network here. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to power up our three-phase power supply. We're going to re-energize the board and then we're gonna to proceed to take uh, voltage readings again. And hopefully we're gonna have a different outcome. Now as I've re-energized our three-phase power supply, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button. We can see that everything is operating as it did before. The changes are going to be in the form of our metering techniques now. I'm going to grab my multimeter and we're going to proceed to taking the measurements again. Now we're going to take readings from this, uh, the output of my circuit breaker, which is going throughout the circuit. And we're going to take it referencing this ground point. Well, we think it was a ground point. And what we see is 69 volts on the multimeter. This isn't correct because if I take a reading to X2, I'm still getting 134 volts. This is not bonded, but I can tell you what is bonded, and that is the faceplate of this receptacle. Because now that we've bonded the secondary of our transformer, I should be able to get a reading off of this. So we're going to take a reading from the output of my circuit breaker to the, cut, the metal of this faceplate. And look, we're seeing 134 volts, which is exactly what we would hope to see. So what we've seen is that 
by bonding the secondary of a transformer, we saw that nothing bad happened. Everything operated the way it was previously. What bonding the secondary of a transformer does is it gives us a, a reference point for our diagnostic equipment. I can now take a reference to this, this cover plate that I know is bonded or to the ground pin, but other pieces of metal we can't take for granted, they are bonded. It's up to electrical workers and tradespeople to understand the differences between metal that has been bonded and know what to look for and to recognize what is bonded and what is not bonded.